So here's kind of the th neat thing about the lesson we're covering today, which is lesson 4-9, is this is the last lesson in this half of the course, which means that when we start up next week with new material, you're getting a new book. So somebody asked me the question, oh, so do we throw out the old book? And the answer is no, never. Never throw out your book. Never throw out your notes. Uh, students who take seriously their notes and their homework and whatnot, when they hold on to their spirals and they go to the high school, they use their spirals as kind of a textbook, a reference material to use. And I've had so many students come back and say to me, I'm so glad you told me to hold on to that because it's really come in handy. Because a lot of what we cover is going to show up again in your next course, and then what you do in the next course shows up two years after that. So really important to hang on to all your spirals from math class in particular. So today we're going to talk about a new type of graph, but this is very different than what we've been covering. This is called qualitative. A qualitative graph. Today's date is the 4th of March, 2016. So what I'm going to do is give you a definition of the qualitative graph, and then we're going to kind of go through this. But here's what's interesting about this this type of graph has very little to do with numbers. It has to do more so with a story. So you actually are going to become story writers as you work on your homework. So this will be kind of interesting for those of you creative types who like to read and write. So what is a qualitative graph? I'll highlight that. So a qualitative graph is a graph um, used to represent situations that may not have numerical values. or graphs where numbers are not included. So every graph you've seen up until this point has had numbers on it. It's had tick marks and you've had a number, or are you counting by ones, twos, fives, so on and so forth. These don't have numbers. So the numbers are not going to play a role when we're doing these graphs, okay? What these graphs are talking about, though, is a situation. So what's important when you're looking at a qualitative graph is you need to read the labels on the axes because they're going to set up the story for you, okay? You're going to pay attention to the steepness of the lines. Okay, That's one of the things we look at on these is how steep are the lines because that's going to indicate uh, potential movement. Um, and then we're going to look for flat surfaces. Indicate constant values. Okay, so here's a beginning scenario, and we're going to look at it from, first off, some key kinds of things you'll see in a graph, and then we're going to look at it as what do you think the story could be. So we have two labels, time, and it's in seconds. So you really do need to pay attention to the units of measure. Is it a long time? Is it short time? Those are very important. And then we're going to have... Um, Oh, actually, let's just do time. 
I was thinking of another one. Let's just make it time. So no, no even label. And then, but over here, we're going to call it water level. Okay. And our graph oops, looks like this. Okay. Anyone know what that shape's called? Octagon. Not an octagon. A trapezoid. Trapezoid. Okay. So I'm going to kind of color code now. Notice that this line here that we see increasing going on. So words like increasing will show up in your scenario. Here, what would you say, how would you describe that? Constant, right? We've been talking about a constant rate of change. That would be like a constant. Okay. Uh, and then this part here, you can see is going down. So we would say that's decreasing. Okay. Now, what you wouldn't say as your story is um, things increase, then stay constant, then decrease. Okay, we need to put it in context. So remember our labels. We have water level over time. So what I'm noticing is that the water level is rising or increasing, and then it stays the same for a while, and then it decreases. So what I want you to do is think about a scenario in which water goes from nothing to increases, stays at a certain level, and then decreases down to nothing. Because this is the bottom here is your, you have nothing, no water level here. That's your zero water level. Jenny, what do you think? Uh, possibly tide. Uh, it could be a tide. Um, I'm going to say tide doesn't usually stay constant. There's con lots of fluctuations going on with that one. Paul? Um, yes, so before you take that first sip, it could stay constant. Okay, that's a good scenario. And here's the killer thing about these. There's a lot of stories that could meet the picture that you see. Okay? Somebody else tell you? So maybe we, had a, we have like a rain catcher. Uh, a lot of people have these rain catchers, these rain barrels in their backyards, and so the water level in the water, uh, the water level in that barrel increases, and then the rain stops. So the water stays constant for a period of time until the sun warms up and starts evaporating the water, and it slowly decreases. Or you could have a leak, and it will leak out. Okay, um, I'm going to tell you that those increase decrease. The more straight they are, the faster things are happening, the more flat it is, it's going to be the longer it's taking. It's kind of slower. Juliana? We hopefully don't have decreasing with our dam. We really don't want that to happen. They do let it go, okay? But the only problem with that scenario is they don't let it all go, right? They let go a little bit at a time as it's needed. This one shows it goes all the way back down to zero. Okay, but I like that's a very creative idea. I like that one. Kyler? Okay, toilet. You do have it decreasing when you flush it, but see, that wouldn't fit this graph because how that graph would start is with the constant. Um, and well, it decreases when you flush it, and then it increases. So it would be a different looking graph. It would have the constant first, then a decrease slant, and then an increase slant, and then a constant. So it would be flat, like a V-shape, flat. That would go with that scenario. I'm still looking for ladies. Come on. We tend to do this. Think about it. Desi. Yes, this is a perfect example of a bathtub. Somebody, this is, because see, I live this, my daughter loves taking baths, except for, for her, this line here would be super long, because if she could stay in there for four hours, she would. Oh, look at me, I'm wrinkly. She gets wrinkly every time. So basically, you have no water in the tub, you turn the water on with the plug in and the water rises. There comes a point 
in most people's cases, where they stop the water running. My daughter sometimes, it's as I find it running on the floor. But it, you have to stop at a certain point, okay? So that's your constant, and you're just soaking in the tub. Now again, she's not much of a soaker. I swear to you, when I'm downstairs, it sounds like she's swimming in the tub. I think the tub's gonna fall through the roof one of these days. And so the water remains the same until she gets the shout from me, T, get out of the tub. Okay, mom. And then the plug comes out and the water drains down to no more water. So this is what we get to write for this sort of idea. We say, um, uh, let's say, let's do it this way. Let's do it with black. Uh, the water for the tub is turned on and begins filling the tub. Once it reached the best height, the water was turned off. So that, you know, kind of shows you you're not going to have an increase in the water level. Water level remains the same. The plug was pulled. And the tub was drained. Drained. Until no more water list, uh, existed. Or let's say remain. So we have elements. Okay. And if we wanted to, we could add uh, the water for the tub is turned on. And the water level increases until it hits the maximum, optimal, best water level. Then I just soak leisurely in the tub. You can add those sorts of things. That's the kind of fun part of doing this is as creative as you are, that's what you can be writing. Then as soon as I turned pruny, it was time to get out, pulled the plug, and the water drained out of the tub completely. Okay. What is pruny? Okay, have you not been in a tub long enough where you start in the pool and your fingers start getting wrinkly? Yeah, like all wrinkly yeah. yeah, have you ever seen a prune? They're pretty wrinkly on the outside. Ever seen a raisin? They're pretty wrinkly too. <laughs> prune is a plum that's dried like a grape is a raisin that's been dried. Welcome to dried fruit, young man. Okay, all right, let's talk, let's talk about another scenario. So here's the deal. What I just wrote is not anything that verbatim you would write. You have your own flourish. You have your own words. But you have a general scenario that takes place. All right? um, this one is going to be time of day. And this is going to be temperature. So notice I don't have any numbers. I don't know anything. I don't know what time of day we're looking at. But here's my graph. Okay. So what would you say about temperatures with relationship to the time of day? What do you think, Juliana? The weather forecast Okay, so somehow information is coming in, but it's not weathercast is gonna be a blip here, a period of time later, another blip, a period of time, another blip. This is giving us nonstop information. So when I'm writing what I'm seeing, I need to fill in all that. Mackenzie? The sun's going up and down. Okay. Um, the sun probably does have an effect on what our temperature would be, but again, we're going to focus in on temperature and time of day. Tell me the story of what the temperature was like throughout this day. Sean? Okay, so we do have an increase, we have a decrease. We have a beginning and an end. You got to write right to the middle, but then you forgot the exact middle. Desi. Okay, so in the beginning of the day, in the morning, it was pretty cool, but as time is passing, 
the day warms up. And then as we get later in the afternoon, the temperature starts decreasing and going back to the low that we had started with. Okay. Now, one thing I haven't heard. Is there a point where it's the hottest part of the day? Okay, yeah, you can see that's the top part of that somewhat looking parabola, right? So that's something that we would mention. So we could say something like this. Uh, the morning temperatures or the morning temp, let's say not temperature, temp, was low but slowly increased in the morning and then I would say something along the lines is that the temp reached its peak the temp reached its peak by the middle of the day and here's the interesting thing is noon considered the hottest part of the day no, in fact, I keep listening to the weather reports, and they're kind of giving you this idea of what the temperature will be like. I'm seeing the hottest part of the day in those weather reports right now being like between 2 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon, where I'm thinking it should be noon, right, because that's halfway through our day. But because our day is elongating, noon isn't necessarily the middle of our day. And so, yeah, we can't give a specific number here to when. We just know that sometime in the middle of the day, we reached the peak. So the temp reached its peak by the middle of the day. Then the temperature slowly decreased throughout the afternoon. And evening until it reached or until it was the same as the morning the beginning temperature or the same as the temperature at the beginning of the day Okay, so I have some um, scenarios that we're going to practice in class, and then your homework is to practice your own set of scenarios. And your own set of scenarios, you're going to be cutting out the words, and you're going to glue it to the picture. Okay.